Welcome to Pioneers, a vlog, a vlog by George Steriu, full of ideas, methodologies and knowledge for a personal, professional and social awakening and empowerment for a society full of possibilities for a better tomorrow for everybody. Today's vlog is going to be about the Hellenic cultural identity. Um, this is based on a study performed by Herd Hofstede in between 1967 and 1973, which was around like 70 different countries, um, 120,000 people. Since then, this study has expanded. And um, why am I talking about Herr Hofstede and why am I talking about the cultural dimensions? Uh, dimensions? Um, the reason is because in our society where we're living right now, it's very important that you know about yourself and also to know a little bit more about other things and what is going on around and besides you. Not knowing yourself and not understanding about what is happening, um, how really companies are collecting data, um, even Facebook right now is collecting about 17,000 data from each single person, means that you don't really have um, the power that you could have to make the proper decisions when it comes to, to your society, to the way that you function, um, and also democracy, because what we're seeing right now with the situation that is going on around the world with the coronavirus and particularly talking about Greece, my country where I am at right now, um, we see that a lot of our rights are being jeopardized, a lot of our rights are actually being violated, um, all for the good of our health. So why have I decided to talk about Herr Hofstede today? Um, there are a lot of things that are going on right now around us and um, although it may sound a little bit like a conspiracy theory, um, be aware that right now with the fourth industrial revolution, with the IT of things, um, with the digital, um, digitization of pretty much everything, with the 5Gs, um, actually this is the reason why they want to implement 5Gs because it makes the transfer of data, not just for the consumers, <laughs> a, a lot much faster and a lot much easier. Um, and it's also easier to store. So be aware that those were the studies like Hofstede um, which put the basis of what really we're living today. And be aware that if it has to do with finance, economics, uh, advertising, marketing, strategy, negotiation, business, there are people that they study all these characteristics. And not only just from Herr Hofstede, which okay, it was done in 1967 up to 1970. After 1981, it was increased a lot more um, to 70 countries, but now it's gone to pretty much every single country for big organizations. Um, companies even like Facebook, they study between 14,000 to 17,000 data per person. Um, that means that um, well, pretty much they know everything about you, even things that you're not aware with, about. And um, I, I read somewhere that, for example, um, Google right now, the algorithm of Google with three photos that you upload, they can tell if you have a tendency towards homosexuality. So imagine that some people before even they realize and they know it themselves, the AI of Google knows whether they are well, towards one direction or another direction, or what are the sexual preferences. This data is being passed to companies like Coca-Cola, and you can see it in many documentaries from Netflix to YouTube if you really look for it. Um, and then they can just direct the marketing approach and the way that they advertise to you. So that way, without you even realizing it, you're now being fed images that are gonna make you to buy more. And if you're wondering, again, that maybe this is a bit too far-fetched, think a little bit more about what is going on right now. Um, with the coronavirus, the fear has made a lot of people buy more. Um, Amazon sales has gone up, um, um, like Wish sales have gone up, lots of companies that are selling goods over the internet have gone up. It's very interesting here to put a pause and to say that what's a YouTube presentation or the research of Dr. Solomon? Um, when we're talking about mortality, it makes us want to purchase a lot faster. So again, this is data being put into the way that we're living every day and how really we are acting as citizens, including how we're behaving towards democracy. So going back into Herr Hofstede then and talking about um, the Hellenic cultural identity. Um, there are six different dimensions that Herr Hofstede actually studied. Uh, originally, there were four, but after 2010, that was increased to another two. Uh, more specific, uh, what I wanted to talk about, for example, um, the first has to do with the power distance index. So I'm going to mention them all together and then I'm going to go directly into one of them and then talk about the Hellenic or Greek 
um, um, dimensions and uh, specific characteristics. So, number one, power distance. Number two, individualism versus collectivism. Number three, masculinity versus femininity. Number four, un uncertainty avoidance. This is a key for the Hellenic and the Greeks. Um, Long-term orientation, number five, versus short-term orientation. And number six has to do with indulgence versus restraint. The first cultural identity for the Hellenists, for the Greeks, is the power distance. And this basically demonstrates the degree of acceptance of the power relations between members of society. So, what I'm talking about is, um, in countries where you have a higher, higher power index, for example, like Latin America, it is acceptable that there is an equality between the people that have power and the people that don't have power. In other countries which have a low index in this kind of uh, dimension, um, like for example Israel or Sweden, uh, it's not acceptable. Everybody is actually equal. Now regarding Greece, Greece between 1 and 100, I think it comes, well actually not I think, it comes to 60. What basically means is that for the Hellenists, for the Greeks, it is acceptable that the person that has power has more rights. It is acceptable that there is a hierarchy between people and it is acceptable that the winner sets the rules. Uh, it is acceptable that um, the people that they don't have power, they just basically follow and accept what goes on. Um, on the positive side, what this means for Hellenists is that because there is that difference in our society, um, the elderly people are also more respected. The elderly people are valued as being members of the society and also members of the family. They're being looked after, their opinion still matters. Um, that gives them a belonging. Um, so it's not just the negatives, it's also the positives as well. The second cultural uh, dimension that we're gonna talk about is the individualism versus collectivism. Um, this dimension basically defines the relationship between um, or how a person fits within a society. Uh, the independence that a person has within a society. And what I mean with this one is an individualistic society, it's acceptable that you succeed and you do well and you are like more egoistic, let's put it towards your own goals, where a collective society means that to do well, it's to help your group also grow as well. And you are part of a group. Um, now, regarding Greece, Greece is some, has a score of 35 from 100, so it goes towards the collectivism. That basically means is that the culture evolves around groups or the concept of us. One of the things that we see many times in Greece is that people are very fanatic about political parties. They belong to one party because the family belongs to this party. They will vote to this party, so the political leaders of this party, in connection now with the pro first dimension, uh, cultural dimension, and um, they can do whatever they want, and then because you're part of the group, you have to obey them and you have to follow them. Um, it is also acceptable in society like Greece, what in other societies they will call as nepotism, um, individualistic societies. So for example, if a family member is part of a business or they work in a company, they will try to bring their family in, they will try to involve the people that they know. Again, this we see it in Greece, where we see like in public companies or people that they hold power, they will involve the relatives, they will involve them, fr the friends or the people that they know and they feel that they can trust. And um, on the other side, when it talks about business, and you have to be aware of this dimension. Um, in Greece, if you want to negotiate, you have to first build a relationship. You have to first show that you are the stand people, that you're part of the group, um, rather than just go directly to the business. This is definitely not gonna help you a lot. So build a trustworthy environment um, versus uh, let's get down to the business, which is more countries that they're more individualistic. The third dimension that we're gonna talk about is about masculinity versus femininity. And this dimension basically defines uh, the way that society prioritizes things. For example, quantity is the male, quality is the female. Um, now, regarding Greece, Greece is on 57 uh, out of 100, which basically means it's more male-orientated or success-driven um, society. So in society like Greece, for example, it's acceptable uh, that the man is looking after or the male is looking after the family and it's considered an honor to take care of your family. Um, success is determined by the winner, 
which they usually set also the rules. Um, the society tends towards the competition, towards the collaboration. Um, and being on top of everybody else is considered to be also success. Um, a family member can add value to the whole of the group in this kind of society if they're performing well. Um, and bear in mind that in a society like this, like in Greece, um, you will not be it will not be surprising if you hear, for example, that uh, people bragging about who they know, what they have done, what they have achieved, because that also makes them feel good because it's more about quantity versus quality. On the other hand, if we're talking about a feminine, um, feministic society, we're talking a bit more about, um, it's more about interested in others, the quality of life, it's not good to stand out and it's better to actually be part of the group and enjoy quality time. Um, you know, the good things in life rather than the materialistic side of life. Cultural dimension is the most important that we're going to talk about, especially for Hellenists or Greeks, because this is the cultural dimension that actually Greece is number one in the whole world. And this is the uncertainty and avoidance. Um, this is actually defines the degree of tolerance that somebody or a society uh, has towards uncertainty and ambiguity. Um, it's the degree of the fear for the new, um, for the future, uh, what change will bring. Um, people are have, uh, feeling uncomfortable and not sure about themselves when there is no laws or specific rules and when there is not like a guidance, um, when they have to follow a specific set path. Um, now, in Greece, as I said, we are number one in the world, 100 out of 100, which is like amazing. Uh, but what this basically means is that in this society, um, people don't like the change. Um, they tend to be very specific with their, um, um, they follow the traditions, they like to do things the same way, um, they feel comfortable following rules and regulations, um, the unpredictable, maybe, or most of the time, maybe have something in there that, you know, it's scary, it's ambiguous, it's risky. Um, Emotionally, as we said before, you need laws, you need um, rules, even though they might not serve you. It means that actually they make the people feel more comfortable. Um, uh, being very typical, have a lot of paperwork. So as we see like in Greece, for example, there is a lot of the public um, um, when you need to go and deal with a, with the government. Um, it's, it's the bureaucracy, it's ridiculous. Even though it might not function, it means that the people want this kind of security because they know really where they're heading. Um, that's the negative things. So on the other side, on the positive things, it also defines that Greek people need time to relax. They need to spend time with their friends. They need to also um, enjoy themselves and have the time outside um, the rules and regulations. Um, it also means that they're very expressive and they're very passionate. That's why you can see it from my body language or other people's body language, is they tend to do a lot of gestures with their hands. So again, that's the cultural identity of uncertainty avoidance where Greece is number one. Um, number five, uh, it's the um, cultural dimension when it has to do with long-term orientations versus short-term orientation. Um, it defines the degree of which society is oriented towards the future or the present. So. Um, Regarding Greece, Greece has 45 in this dimension, which indicates that it leans towards a short-term orientation. Not so much, it's pretty much in the middle, so short-term versus long-term. Um, Greeks have the tendency to be more faithful in their traditions, they do the Greek dancing, everybody pretty much knows how to do this. They're pretty much um, into their own uh, culture, um, they're very conservative when it comes to all these kind of things. And again, they're looking for suspicion when it comes to something about the future. All of these dimensions are intertwining. So again, it's important that um, you understand them, you put them all together, that you can get a basic or a general idea when it has to do with um, a society of somebody or where it belongs to. Um, as we said, Greece is more about the short term versus the long term. Um, societies with the long term, it's like uh, China, for example, um, where they're making goals, um, for the next 50 
well not 50 that we do in Europe maybe like for the next 200 300 700 years there are companies in China that are 37 generations long um, I think somebody there's a joke but um, when somebody asked the Chinese premier what do you think about Europe his question was um, when was the French Revolution and when they answered 300 years ago 250 years ago he laughed and he said you're still babies <laughs> so again be aware when you're negotiating and you're dealing with all these kind of people and again about Greeks more towards the short term uh, rather versus the long term uh, cultural dimension is the grace versus restraint so this actually um, defines the way that a society controls the desires and impulses um, Greece to be honest is on 50 so there is not really direct conclusions about whether it is the one side or the other side let's look again for the Hellenic cultural dimensions all together so we can get an idea so power distance number one they believe in hierarchy the Greeks they consider inequalities between people acceptable the person that holds the power is the person that makes the rules and he is okay it's okay to actually have more uh, more power um, and it's okay also to benefit uh, if you have a good position from those that they don't have a good position number two individualism versus collectivism in Greece uh, integrate to a strong uh, cohesive team so again family teams political parties is very very important um, and those parties protect the members um, one member does well that means the political party does well the family will look after the people they will try to put them into positions and they expect that these people from the family are involved to the businesses number three masculinity versus femininity quantity versus quality in Greece priority in the quantity in life so it's more male just by a little bit but more male over quality um, it's guided by competition and success this is why Greeks are driven that's why they're going away a lot of times they immigrate they try and they look for something better so they can show that they have achieved something more um, success is determined by the winner best in the field the men consider their honor to look after the family and then the success of the family member and so it and their so depends on the social integration that they have and um, if somebody within the family member does well then the whole family also does well number four uh, uncertainty avoidance number one uh, in the whole world is Greece so in Greece um, people do not feel comfortable with uncertain and ambiguous uh, situations change creates stress they're afraid of the new and possible change it may bring um, emotional people and you can see it also from the body language they need structure laws and regulations even though they might not be um, uh, on their benefit they might be ancient and not really work on function very well um, even if they're artificial they will obey them bureaucracy gives them a sense of balance um, laws and rules are very difficult to separate the unpredictable always hides an ambush and the illusion of security and bureaucracy as we said before uh, is very 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 important number five um, long-term orientations versus short term so in Greece again uh, they keep the traditions they're faithful uh, more towards the short term as we said in Greece they look for suspicion with suspicion for any change in the future and they do not have a realistic approach and general plan for change and the future which basically means also that they don't invest in education uh, as much um, they don't consider general planning as important and preparation for the future as important what other cultures do like the Chinese for example and number six grace grace versus restraint so in Greece is bang on the middle uh, what basically means is that um, members of the society tolerate and don't tolerate a basic human um, weaknesses from all of this there are some lessons to be learned whether you're Greek that you're watching this documentary this uh, this vlog or whether you are foreigner um, be aware that you are um, as we said the culture is distilled into somebody from their family from the school from from their environment from everything that they live and that's really what determines them um, when I did a comparison with different kind of societies um, where we consider that they're successful and not successful um, whether they're doing good economically whether they have a power around the world 
um, not looking on the negative power around the world, but on a positive influence around the world. This is some of the um, impacts or the, the things that I got out. So for example, um, when you have small hierarchy and inequalities between strong and the weak, uh, it's not acceptable um, in this kind of societies. Uh, those in power that don't get more benefits, there is more inequality. However, there is a big argument that, for example, societies like China or the ideal um, hierarchy is somebody like a dictator. Um, if you see it in societies that they have kind of a dictatorship that tends to grow quite fast, but the problem is, when I read some studies, that after 20, 25 years, that gets into people, they become very, um, well, very tyrannic, I would say. So, overall, if there is no power distance between the leaders and everybody works together, collective, and those societies tend to do a lot better longer term, and the people tend to have a lot better quality of life. Um, there is no nepotism in this kind of society. There is more meritocracy. So you are gaining a position because you're worth it, not because you know somebody. So, final words of conclusion. What have we learned from all this? So we looked at the different dimensions from Hofstede, but let's not be fooled of thinking that this is only one of the studies that actually have happened around the world. Um, as we said, Facebook, Instagram, Google, um, YouTube, all of these things, even Messenger that can use even their um, you know, the microphones right now on our smart devices to actually listen and observe. And um, if we really want to be part of the society that is more democratic, we have to be aware that all those things are taking place. We cannot really be naive anymore. Um, going now back into the Greek society and as Greeks, as Hellenists, what should we really be considering is that there is a few things that we have to change. Before we change our society, we have to change. Um, we have to look deep inside us and understand that only by us being individuals, only by us um, being aware of what is happening around us, but also nothing that we learn is wasted and we should not really be directed towards one specific point. Only then we can be proper citizens and we can be proper part in a democratic society. I wrote some questions for us that we have to maybe consider to develop maybe a little bit more of the critical type of thinking that nowadays we're lacking from our society. So um, it's good to have hierarchy, but how deep? Should inequalities, inequalities really be accepted? Should, should the leader really be always right? Um, in our society, should the leader always not even be punished sometimes and just forgiven and have that difference between who is the top and who is on the bottom of the society or the ladder. Um, should the power benefit the top people or should it be more distributed more equally? Um, maybe it is about time to avoid uncertainty. The future does not really hold um, fears and insecurities. The future also holds surprises and there can be nice surprises. We should maybe invest more in our education and try to keep here some of the talent that so easily we're exporting. So, to conclude with, let us think a little bit more about ourselves and let us understand that unless we change, society cannot really change. It is important to be aware of what makes us who we are, to look at the different dimensions and cultural identities that we have as Greeks or whatever nation you're from, understand how this impacts us on a larger scale, on our day-to-day -day negotiations, on our day-to-day -day dealings, on working with people outside our culture, because at this right moment, when we're talking to, um, we are um, going through a lot of changes from globalization to digitization to even um, health changes that we have to be aware and make changes. So unless we change, the society will not change. And remember always what we said before, why wait until we go to another culture to adapt what really works? Yeah, let's make the changes for ourselves. Imagine, imagine that we lived in a society that we um, adjusted a lot of the things that really affect us and that don't give us a good reputation, that makes us more efficient, um, but also enforce the good things that makes us who we are. I find all of this information, my personal um, um, web page, blog, uh, www.georgiosteru.com 
Um, at the same time, please do subscribe on my uh, YouTube channel, Pioneer, and feel free to spread the message for a better personal um, and professional society empowerment and awakening. Um, thank you very much. I wish you all the best.